Good morning. It's great to be with you this morning to continue these discussions on how nature can be prescribed for positive results in prevention, treatment, and recovery. My name is Keith Tidball, and I hail from Cornell University in upstate New York. My talk today is titled Rivers of Recovery, Research on Fly Fishing and Therapeutic Outcomes for Veterans. The subject of my talk today is the central focus of my academic life at this point. My lab, WWRX, engages a suite of related initiatives, all dealing with the therapeutic attributes of time spent outdoors, especially for those who have experienced trauma, such as combat wounded veterans and others, uh, disaster respond, uh, re responders, uh, survivors, et cetera. And note that I've included my website and Facebook page on, on the slide here, uh, if you'd like to check that out. This uh, RX thing in tandem with words like nature or outside or parks is interesting, isn't it? And it's exciting. According to Aaron Rubin, a writer for Outside Magazine, what's happening now is different. It's widespread, systematic, and at least in inspiration or aspiration, evidence-based. Though boutique wilderness treatments for trauma and some behavioral disorders have existed for years, the idea that your primary care physician, psychiatric nurse practitioner, or cardi cardiologist might prescribe a park before a pill is quite new. Or is it? So this presentation is obviously about fly fishing in the nature RX context. And in a book chapter I wrote that'll be out soon and you can see the link to that book below. I wrote that the notion that fly fishing can be therapeutic is not new. According to John Gierick, they say you forget your troubles on a trout stream, but that's not quite it. What happens is that you begin to see where your troubles fit into the grander scheme of things and suddenly they're just not such a big deal anymore. I said, since the publication of Dom Juliana Berner's Treatise of Fishing with an Angle in 1496 and Isaac Walton's The Complete Angler in 1653, the public has been in the process of being convinced that fly fishing is good for you. That's probably because it is good for you. Dr. Herbert Benson, the mind-body medicine professor of medicine at Harvard Medical School and the director emeritus of the Benson Henry Institute at Massachusetts General Hospital, says humankind has learned over millennia how to turn off stress by breaking the train of everyday thinking, by invoking the relaxation response. Two things, he says, are necessary to create the relaxation response, a passive setting and the repetition of a sound, word, phrase, prayer, or movement. What better example of this than fly fishing, Dr. Benson says. With the repetitive back and forth motion of the rod and line and fly, you're focusing on where the fly is going to land on the water and that breaks the train of everyday thought. In other ways, fly fishing has been compared to meditation in that fly fishers perform a simple repeated task often for hours on end. The motion of fly fishing, he says, is part and parcel of the activity itself and may contribute to its calming effect. Besides, it's achieving something. You might catch a fish. One of my main partner organizations in this work is the not-for-profit group Rivers of Recovery. Rivers of Recovery is dedicated to providing rehabilitation to physically and psychologically injured combat veterans through innovative outdoor-based therapies and pioneering research. They strive to provide participants with therapeutic programs that result in measurable and sustainable improvement. And these programs are designed to re-enable and re-energize participants and provide the support and self-confidence that's necessary to maximize long-term recovery. Rivers of Recovery provides, uh, prides itself <clears throat> on placing a high priority on demonstrable and repeatable results. They have a record and a reputation for producing peer-reviewed studies that support their therapeutic objectives, and I gratefully serve as their research advisor. They work with uh, Dr. Gary Wynn, who serves in the US Army, at the rank of Lieutenant Colonel, currently at the Uniformed Services University, as well as other research institutions such as the University of Southern Maine, University of New Hampshire, and of course, Cornell University. Uh, oh, by the way, Dr. Wynn co-authored Complementary and Alternative Medicine for PTSD, published by Oxford University Press, and you see the book cover here. So now, in the time that I have left, I'm gonna take you on a whirlwind tour of some of the research results from studies of Rivers of Recovery programs and participants, starting with the most recent. So most recently, a paper focused on the Project Healing Waters program appeared in the Therapeutic Recreation Journal, and authors of this study worked with Rivers of Recovery in the past, and it's clear that observations and findings in this study build upon previous work. The study utilized a focus group method to explore the meaning of fly fishing 
and in, in which the, the meaning of fly fishing may serve as a coping resource in transcending negative life events such as PTSD. And it helps move veterans and military personnel toward personal transformation and post-traumatic growth. <clears throat> Moving on, Dr. Jesse Bennett, one of the authors of the article I just described in the previous slide, is the researcher who has conducted the most data collection and analysis with the Rivers of Recovery program on therapeutic fly fishing. And she's worked with ROR, we'll call it Rivers of Recovery, in both her master's studies and in pursuit of her PhD. A few years before the 2020 article that I described above, Jesse and colleagues published Outcomes of a Therapeutic Fly Fishing Program for Veterans with Combat-Related Disabilities, a Community-Based Rehabilitation Initiative in the Community Mental Health Journal. This study focused on 40 veterans that participated in four-day therapeutic fly fishing programs. The outcomes explored included reducing symptoms of post-traumatic stress, depression, perceived stress, functional stress, stress, increasing self-determination, and leisure satisfaction. Each research participant completed pre-test, post-test, and a three-month follow-up questionnaire. The results indicated significant decreases from the pre-test to post-test for symptoms of PTS, depression, perceived stress, and functional impairment, and an increase in leisure satisfaction from pre-test to the three-month follow-up. Moving along, in 2014, Jesse and another group of colleagues published earlier research with Rivers of Recovery in an article titled, as you see, <clears throat> Veterans Perceptions of Benefits and Important Program Components of a Therapeutic Fly Fishing Program. This was in the Therapeutic Recreation Journal. Uh, this work examined the perceptions of veterans with combat-related disabilities following participation in a Rivers of Recovery therapeutic fly fishing program. The study utilized six focus groups uh, and, their, and their discussions, and the constant comparison method was used uh, in analysis to discover the two primary emergent themes of perceived benefits and important program components. Uh, there were sub-themes, of course, and that's some future work that we'll be diving into presently. Still uh, continuing with this whirlwind lit review, in 2013, in consort with her academic advisor and mentor, Jesse and colleagues published initial data and analysis gathered from Rivers of Recovery participants in the article titled, Participation in Outdoor Recreation Program Predicts Improved Psychosocial Well-Being Among Veterans with Post-Traumatic Stress Disorder. This was a pilot study. The study evaluated the effectiveness of a two-day, three-night outdoor recreation intervention conducted by Rivers of Recovery involving fly fishing and reducing stress, and there were 74 veterans with PTSD in the study. In this study, participants completed repeated assessments of attentiveness, mood, depression, anxiety, and somatic stress across three time periods corresponding to two weeks before the trip, which was the baseline, the last day of the trip, and then a six-week follow-up. Acute effects were observed for improvements in attentiveness and positive mood states coupled with significant and sustained reductions in negative mood states, anxiety, depression, and somatic symptoms of stress. So according to the study's results, comparisons between the baseline and follow-up periods revealed finding or uh, revealed significant improvements in sleep quality and reduction in perceptual stress and PTSD symptoms. These findings suggest that combat veterans with PTSD may benefit from participation in group-based outdoor recreation, such as fly fishing to improve psychosocial well-being. In 2011, Jesse and colleagues published War Narratives, Veteran Stories, PTSD Effects and Therapeutic Fly Fishing. This study uh, was where 67 letters of veterans uh, were written as they concluded their participation in a Rivers of Recovery Therapeutic Program in Dutch John, Utah, along the Green River. And these were analyzed, these collective narratives were analyzed based on three-part processes of reading, explication, explanation, and exploration. The authors systematically analyzed the stories to present a narrative and set of themes that would inform and guide future empirical studies on the realities of veterans, program experiences, and perspectives on outdoor recreation therapy treatments. And finally, to conclude this uh, whirlwind review of Rivers of Recovery therapeutic fly fishing literature, most of which has been generated in partnership with Rivers of Recovery, Dr. Elizabeth Vela conducted groundbreaking work on how outdoor recreation therapy improves psychosocial wellness and reduces daily cortisol production among veterans with PTS. Bella found that the Rivers of Recovery Therapeutic Fly Fishing Program suggested improved psychosocial well-being while reducing daily cortisol production. Further significant improvements were observed with respect to sleep quality, 
and reductions in somatic and perceptual stress with a marginal reduction in PTSD symptoms. So given all of this, you might ask, why fly fishing in particular? What, if anything, distinguishes fly fishing and cold water fisheries or trout experiences from other outdoor recreation therapeutic modalities? So to answer these questions, I'm gonna continue my role as research advisor for Rivers of Recovery by pursuing the following questions with some of the colleagues mentioned above. Does this create an opportunity to take a break from daily stress? Does it give veterans a chance to learn a new skill or improve their skills, which can build confidence? Does catching fish, even if only to release them, create a sense of accomplishment? Do regular fishing opportunities give veterans a chance to look forward to something pleasurable? Does fly fishing encourage independent thinking and behavior in a low risk environment? And other questions that you see before you. I look forward to diving into these questions and continuing our, our work with Rivers of Recovery. So in conclusion, I hope you can see that Rivers of Recovery and their approaches to therapeutic fly fishing are engaging those affected by trauma in ways that are being empirically documented and analyzed and that the preliminary results look promising indeed. Lots of work to be done in the future, hopefully with many of you in partnership. And I hope that those partnerships are fruitful and, and that they, are, they evolve very soon. Thank you very much, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the conference.